Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coach Better from Aduro Learning. My name is Kim Cofino. And my name is Clint Hamada, and we're going to be your hosts for today's episode. Uh, this week, we're talking with Diana B. About, an experienced instructional coach who is just starting at her new school. Diana shares her experiences, her ideas, and her strategies for starting in a new school as an experienced coach and walking that fine line of pushing without shoving. If you enjoy any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us know what you want to hear more about. Subscribe to our channel to see all of our coaching videos and click on the notifications bell so you know as soon as each video is posted. Please make sure to watch all the way to the end. We've got two great opportunities for your professional learning that we think you'll love. So let's get started. Diana, can you tell us a little bit about your current coaching role, where you are now, where you have come from, what's your situation? So I am currently at the American International School of Guangzhou in China, and um, I arrived this year, and I'm in the role of an innovation coach at the secondary level. I was previously in Doha, Qatar for two years as a tech teacher, lead tech teacher at a school there. And before that, I was at Sheko International School in Shenzhen, China. So I'm um, back in China doing some coaching. And I know that this is a new school because you were in Sheku before. So what is the coaching model like at this school? Um, I, I think it's uh, really, I don't more of a like in need, like what did the teachers need and, and responding to that. Uh, I am assigned a, technically to the high school but I'm working at the secondary level. So it's um, supporting a curriculum is the main focus and then providing uh, you know, PD and support based on teacher needs. Um, sometimes that's planned out, sometimes it's um, the same day, right in the, right in the moment there. Um, so that's at, at this point, we're also going to be rolling out some innovation goals where teachers will select um, specific goals about um, the use of innovation and technology in the classroom. And so I'll be a big uh, support for that. And are you working uh, independently or are you working as part of a team? Part of a team. There, we have a director of technology and innovation and then a middle school innovation coach who also teaches some uh, technology courses in the middle school. And we also have an elementary coach as well. So that's our coaching team. And of course, we also have a, um, an IT team or tech team that handles a lot of the, um, the services and the, the platforms and the uh, tech, very technical things um, that people need support with. Okay. And you mentioned earlier that you are responsible for the curriculum side or a lot of the curricular work. Do you have like a curriculum office as well that you work with or are you kind of working mostly within the technology or the, the IT, ICT office? Um, actually, what um, the, the department decided to do last year, the school decided to do last year, the secondary, is actually move the curriculum director. Her office is right next to our office. In fact, there's a door. We keep it open uh, unless there's uh, meetings going on in that. So we're, uh, they purposely did that to um, move us closer together physically uh, to, to really promote that uh, collaboration. So I can just, you know, talk, you know, call uh, Ruth is our director of curriculum. Oh, let's talk about this. Or I'm ha she can tell me I'm having a meeting with uh, middle school English this afternoon. Can you join us? And, and, or we're really pushing this, um, this, uh, or I think they're revising social studies curriculum this year. So, um, you know, I'll hopefully be a part of those conversations as well. So it's, um, it's an effort by the school um, to really also demonstrate that, that we need to work, we're working together, supporting each other. Uh, and that, I mean, there's certain technical things that like we're using certain platforms, of course, we're going to support, you know, helping teachers learn how to use those platforms. But then ultimately the goal is that we're working um, with curriculum, uh, with the curriculum department and the leadership there and the teachers in uh, supporting them. I think that's such a powerful like symbol and metaphor, right? That you've got technology and curriculum like side by side, both physically and hopefully pedagogically and philosophically. Um, and it also teachers dropping in or coming in for questions with you. You'd be like, oh, let's go and talk to the curriculum people and just see how easy it is or see what, you know, what those natural connections are or vice versa. Oh, you want to do that? Let's go and talk to Diana and see you know, what she has potentially to help us do that or what she can help research. Right. It's such a, such a great collaboration model. Right. And I've already had conversations with our director of curriculum and she, she's asked me, how can I support you as a new coach? And I said, 
just keep me in, in the loop. And if you hear things, let me know. Like, uh, if something comes up, you know, recommend that they stop in and, and have a conversation with me as well. So we're really um, working closely together to um, to help that happen. Now you have a really, I guess, kind of unique situation in that you are not only um, returning to China, but you're also returning as an experienced coach. And so you're in this new school, but you've had this experience in several other schools. What are you noticing? What's different? How is this experience, yeah, I guess, different from previous? Right. And, and I've, I've been reflecting on that, uh, you know, coming in as a new, new coach, but an experienced coach. And so how do I navigate being new to the, the school, but, um, you know, the, the admin that hired me know about my experience, and there's a couple of people I already knew before I came to the school that knew about my experience, um, but there's a whole lot of people that, that don't. <laughs> that don't. So there's a lot of time right now, it's a lot of relationship building, um, but I think also I have to build credibility as well. I can have a presence on Twitter. I can have my name, you know, in different things because I've presented. But, um, you know, people want to see what you can do for them. And so I think it's that I have all this experience. How do I let people know about it and demonstrate that so they can see how that I can help? And, and so that's been, that's been on my mind as well. Is how do I, you know, besides sending out a link to my online CV so everyone can see all the things that I've done, how, how do I communicate to the staff? Um, but also not that I'm coming in as like, oh, I'm the expert ed tech coach and I'm going to tell you how to do everything and where I'm going to make everything better. And I'm, you know, I'm working and so those, I need to build those relationships and see where I can help out. But there's also things I, you know, they're using some flat pat, uh, platforms that I'm not familiar with and I need to get up, um, upskilled on as well. So it's also for me also being transparent and very honest about like, I don't particularly know. We just had a PD yesterday and there were some things I didn't know the answer to, but I said, I don't know the answer. I will find it out and I will communicate it to you. Um, so yeah, it's just right now. Uh, and I had a conversation with my colleague, one of the other coaches today and it, you know, it's going to take some time, but um, it's important that I build those relationships and build that credibility with the staff, despite all of the experience that I have which is really helpful in a lot of ways, but then how do I communicate and how do I use that um, to my best ability without seeming like I'm just here to tell everybody how it should be done. How are you keeping up your visibility, both kind of physically and also you, you talked a little bit about like communicating out to the staff. I think it's always, every start of the year and even in the middle of the years, you know, we always reflect, what can we do more to kind of push our services out, push ourselves out, put, let people know what it is, A, that we have done, and B, what we can do. Um, have you, either in, in this position or maybe in previous positions that you're wondering if they'll work at your current school, um, what, what works for you in terms of trying to get your, your visibility up amongst the staff? Being present uh, at meetings, the, the curriculum, um, the director of curriculum, she had started the year meetings with all the different departments at the middle school and high school level. I attended all of those. Um, at least I was there and um, listening. And in some cases, I went ahead and I felt there was sometimes there was appropriate for me to make recommendations or I followed up on that. So being visible at those planning meetings right from the start and any uh, you know, meeting or event um, that the staff is at to just become part of the staff as well. I'm now, um, this past week, have begun scheduling meetings with uh, different department heads, or different departments, um, or sections in the middle school. And I'm, I, the next week and a half, I have a lot of different meetings I'm gonna be attending, just to, again, to, to show that I'm there and, and to listen. A lot of it's, I'm doing a lot of listening as well right now to hear what people are saying and what they're, what they're working on. Uh, we, in our office, we keep the door open. So, you know, just encouraging people to pop in and drop in. And, and even the first couple of weeks, people would stop by looking for the other coach. Oh, I'm looking, for, you know, I'm looking for him and he's gonna help. And I said, well, is there something I can help you with? And in most cases I could. And then it was just kind of building those building blocks of um, helping where I can. And then hopefully the word, you know, um, gets out as well. Uh, I'm, you know, on Twitter as well. We have a number of people who are on Twitter. So um, keeping things active and, and interacting with the, my uh, staff that are 
um, sharing what they're doing on Twitter and uh, just finding anywhere I can pop in. I'm I'm also kind of the um, our director of technology and innovation and the other coach do they call walkabouts uh, where they just when they have some time and they walk around and when a classroom is open or a teacher is working where it's it's comfortable for them to just kind of check, walk in and check in. So I'm accompanying them right now. And as I get to know the staff um, and feel more comfortable about just popping in, uh, then I'll, I'll do more of that. Right now I'm accompanying them when I can just to, to do that. So it's a lot of um, just being visible in lots of different ways. Um, I've been sharing information um, with different, either small groups or the staff uh, as well. Um, and just where I can, you know, just like, like I said, where I'm seeing some need, I'm seeing some interest and sharing out some resources with that. It's a lot of kind of promotion and, um, like you said, being physically visible, being visible like on social media or the, the platforms that we're using to, uh, to, um, to communicate. Um, I'm also attending trainings um, with the teachers, even if it's not something I'm going to be using since I'm not in a teaching a specific class, but it's still important for me to be there as well and be supportive. Do you have, have you, would it fit within all this stuff? for you to have meetings with the department heads and kind of just get some background on how they've worked with coaches before and what their department needs just to kind of, I don't know, when I go in as a consultant, it's really nice if I, I know I'll only be there for a short period of time, you're going to be long term, full time and all that. But like, right. it's really mm -hmm. nice to get that immediate insight into what's going on in this department and what, where do you feel like you really need help? I don't know, is that something that could fit into that whole like gamut of all those things? Sure. You just mentioned? <laughs> Sure. Um, and when I sent the emails to request um, request some time at their their meetings, I did offer to meet with the department head first on their own if they needed to. But all of them pretty much said no. Come to our meeting and and meet with the whole um, uh, the whole department or or that. It's it's the school. I think it's around eleven around a thousand. It's it's not a huge school, so department um, is not going to be a huge number of people. Maybe depending on the department, two to six people. So they're, they're smaller groups already, but um, you know, I'll go through this first round of meetings and I'll get feedback about that as well. And then um, probably in October, start touching base again. Um, it's just, it's a constant, like just building um, those things, um, those opportunities. And there's also things where they may not need support for a while or for a specific, um, you know, project in a specific class. The, the coach that I replaced left me a lot of notes about what she did with, with the different um, departments and specific people. So that's one thing I'm gonna follow up on is, okay, I heard, you know, according to the notes, last year you did this and this, are you still interested? Are you good on your own? Also, if they're doing things, I also wanna document, even if I don't support them, to document what they're doing. So we have, um, we know what's going, you know, happening in the school as well. Um, the school does have a, an innovation initiative. So we want to have examples to document that that's, that's what's happening in the school. So I, I'm happy, yeah, the, I was pleased that they, you know, I sent out emails to each department head and it was basically, I'd like to come to your meeting just for 10 or 15 minutes. I don't want to spend a huge amount of time. And then um, they've all been very receptive to that. So um, that's a positive, a positive for me. It's a start. Just thinking about how welcoming they all were, do you think that that part of that also has to do with that there's like a little bit of a history of coaching at the school that you're coming in as an experienced coach, but you just said you're replacing a coach. So you're an experienced coach, new to a school, but replacing an existing coach, like that feels like a good, kind of a good situation to be in, right? The only new piece of that is you understanding the culture of the school. So my question really is, do you think that there is a history or a culture of coaching already existing at the school? And how has that kind of impacted your like ease of transition? So there, there is a history. They've had uh, innovation coaches, of course, of course, like many schools, the job title has changed from like tech integrationists. And you're seeing a lot more of learning innovation or innovation or learning coaches where like we talked earlier about like with curriculum and tech really working strongly together and overlapping as well. So uh, there's a history of coaches. I think it's like a lot of schools it's evolved uh, and coaches bring their own personality with the job. So um, there's, there's history and I've, been getting bits, you know, I've getting, been getting some of that and which it's great to have. And uh, it's important to under, like they, but I, I think schools, and that's the sense I get here is it's evolved over time. So 
there's a history of it, but it's probably like many schools, it's looked different over the years. And so that depends on where they're at in the school using technology for education in, in general, which some schools you do need that, you know, like a tech, they needed it, someone who really can show them how to use the technology. But then over time, teachers gain more experience, they get more comfortable with it, and so now it's really looking, okay, now let's make sure that we're supporting the, the teaching, the learning with, with this technology. So yeah, the, his, the history's there, and it's good to know about it and from where, you know, kind of how things have built. But the co like, that's the other thing we talked about is like, I'm not the new old coach. Like, it's, it happened for about a week, like, oh, you're the new so-and-so. And I'm like, yeah, my name, <laughs> but my name's Diana and I'm the new innovation coach. And so I have a different personality and a different experiences and different um, ways that I'll approach things. So history, yes, important. Um, good to know uh, as far as taking things and moving forward but also um, expecting things to evolve over time. So how are you, in, not just in this, in this position, but just in general, how, what are some ideas or some thoughts for people that you know, have to support a wide range of abilities, dispositions, experiences, you have some uh, some teachers who are like, no, no, I can do this on my own. You have other teachers who, you know, it's almost like you have to kind of pull them along. Um, and then I guess a question that's always on my mind too is what's your, your feeling about or how does your school approach the idea of experiences like horizontally? Is that something, you know, you want all of your seventh graders to be doing or all of your ninth graders to be doing or is it okay that you have pockets of people who are really excited about it and pockets of people who are less excited about it and how do you kind of work within those those variables that's a, that's a big question I'm um, asking the easy question <laughs> no um, I think the way that I approach it just in general is I need to have a lot of information and it's not I'm fortunate because it's not just me I have other colleagues uh, in, that are also coaches. I have a, a great network uh, of coaches to, to get uh, feedback from. I think it's really about what, what are the goals of the school? I always try to tie things back to the mission and vision. And then you're, you're never going to have everybody, students or teachers, on the exact same page. So what I look at, I try to look at the bigger picture of what are the goals we have that is going to help the school move and improve towards their uh, mission and vision. Uh, and then let's start chunking out things, looking at what needs are, who is at a point where they don't really need support. And it's gonna change year after year, even semester after semester, and then reevaluate. There needs to be a lot of reflection and reevaluating of goals. So for me, it's important to know what are the goals, either the ones I need to set or the teachers need to set or the, the school setting, and then how are we gonna get to those goals? And just as an educator in general, what are people's needs or what are their strengths? What do, you know, how can we, how can we uh, leverage what people are already doing? And, and it's, there's, there's lots of moving parts and also you have to really focus on what's gonna, where to put your energy because you can put your energy all over the place. Um, there's always gonna be things to work on even though we sometimes joke as coaches we're trying to work ourselves out of a job. There's always gonna be changes, there's always gonna be things happening. Um, and you want to help kind of people move. There's like that train analogy of people moving the cars and things like that. But where can you focus, focus that energy um, and help, you know, make the biggest, you know, try to make the biggest impact you have, um, whether it's your professional development, whether it's working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's just, I remember in an interview one, one time someone asked me, well, what's your typical day or your typical week? I don't have particularly one. Every day is different. Um, there's lots of different, um, and it's developing as a new, a new coach. I see it even day by day. I'm, I'm, there's more things happening. There's more things I'm ready to, um, to help with or take charge of. Um, but then I have, to, I have to, my team has to, the school has to um, reflect and reevaluate and refocus um, on, a re on a regular basis. So you mentioned a bunch of things there that I want to summarize because I think they're really valuable. And the way that you mentioned them, I'm going to frame them just like slightly differently just because that's how they kind of went in my head. But thinking about you as an experienced coach coming into a new school and trying to figure out the dynamics of that school culture, 
you talked about the things that are so important to kind of get started with. And the first one is knowing what the school's mission and vision and goals are and making sure everything is kind of attached to that. And then figuring out where people's strengths and areas for opportunity are so that you know what maybe doesn't need your your insight at this moment in time because it's already working well and then what really does need your help. And then figuring out what is the most you know, what, what's the most bang for your buck thing that you're going to do? Like, sure, there's probably a lot of things that need your attention right now, but kind of prioritizing all of that. And then in line with all of that is the stuff that you talked about before about being visible and attending meetings and being part of professional development and walking around the school. And I don't think you said it, but I'm sure you do it being in the lunchroom or the break room or just like physically being there and available. I feel like that's like kind of two pillars, maybe three pillars of success when you're new in a new school, those are the things you want to look at. Where is the school going? What are the strengths and challenges that the school currently has? And how can you get to know all the people, the characters, the players, you know, so that you can actually support them in areas that will actually make a difference for the school? So I think all of that stuff is really valuable for anyone going into a new school as a coach, whether you're experienced or not. And I would add something to that. Um, and Diana mentioned it, and I'm going to, again, reframe it slightly differently, but it's also knowing where people have been so that you can honor the work that they have done and help them move on from there. Because I, I think, you know, sometimes when you come into a new school, it's really easy to get into that, oh, this is how we did it at my other school kind of mentality. Or, oh, yeah, I've seen this problem before, and I know how. I've got an idea of how we can work on that. But it's really understanding where those teachers and students are coming from and honoring the place where they are and how they got there and then helping to push them to kind of make the leap or make change direction or just even just take that big step to get to you know that that next area of growth for them yeah that's that's a very great that's a very you know an awesome point as far as like when you talk about the history of a school is is finding out who, who's done what, and that's been what's been great about the notes that the coach left for me, is now I can go to people and say, hey, I heard that you did this last year, tell me more about it, and recognize the work that, that they did as well. Uh, and um, uh, celebrate, the celebrations are really important as well. So as you're kind of transitioning to this new school and scoping everything out and figuring out how you fit, what is surprising you as an experienced coach in a new school, what's, what's surprising to you? I think for, my, for myself, just to kind of reflect on how did I get, uh, how I got here, which is a lot, of, a lot of times I even had a couple of people ask me like, how did you get to the position? Did you major in computer science in college? And it's like, no, it's this whole journey. And if you have 10 minutes, I can get, give you the rough outline. I think what I've realized lately is I've had this kind of time to start to get to know that I, there's still a lot I need to learn, still a lot of people I need to know, but um, the, the confidence I have from previous experiences, uh, Clint kind of brought up, it's like, you don't want to just um, say, oh, and that's what I've been trying to be careful about saying, well, at my other school, da, 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 da. And so, um, but I have some really, really great experiences and I'm having, I am in a shorter, I, it's, been a shorter amount of time that I, I've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, I'm ready to take charge of some things. Here's some things that I'm ready to take charge of. And I thought that would still be a little ways out before I felt comfortable to do it. So I think that's based on um, uh, the confidence that I, that I have developed over the last, particularly the last few years and the people that I've worked with and the opportunities that I've had. And most people who know me personally, I, I, I'm a bit humble <laughs> about things. So for me to feel that confidence for me is a huge thing for myself personally and professionally. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, that just my own perspective and feeling about where I'm at, just like basically four or five weeks into the job. Um, I've still got a lot of things to, to do to build that capacity, build the credibility and the relationships but um, I'm, I'm ready, to go on some, ready to go on some things. And we talked about, we've chatted about that, um, the phrase I talked about, pushing without shoving, and that kind of finding some places where I'm ready to, to push a little bit more to um, see what we can do without, um, you know, isolating people or um, giving a little kink into the, the credibility in that. But um, so yeah, that's just personally, on a personal slash professional level. Um, with that. And uh, 
also what's been happening, I, like I said, we've got some new platforms. I'm at a new school and um, it's just also in the other <laughs> sense, I'm having to do a lot of learning. So uh, I'm not maybe not so much surprised, but the amount of like exercise my brain has really been getting, <laughs> particularly over the last four weeks and that I'm, you know, doing a lot of learning as well. And, um, but it's also great. I, it's like, it just, um, I love learning and I love helping to solve problems. And, um, so that's the, um, so it's been in a way I was kind of, you know, that you have that nervousness coming into a brand new place, which I, I knew it's kind of, I've been working with a lot of new coaches and people who are coaching and going to coaching, um, positions as well. So I have, I'm really practicing what I preach now as far as like how, um, uh, how you handle being new or you moving into a coaching position and that. So just kind of some surprises as far as like, Oh yeah, that's, um, shouldn't have been a surprise, but you know, I'm, I'm going through that as well. I think that idea of productive discomfort, you know, you're new and it kind of is a little bit uncomfortable, but it does make you look into like what you really believe and what you're trying to accomplish and how you want to accomplish that. And, you know, you knew how the systems work at your previous school, but now you have to kind of rethink it. That's a, to me, I think that's a good feeling. I'm relatively new. This is my third year. So I remember those first couple of days at a new school. Um, but I think, you know, that idea of pushing without shoving it's to me, it's how do you help teachers get into that kind of productive, productively uncomfortable area where you start to question maybe, you know, just ask those kind of naive questions about why they do things that way or have they, you know, what are they trying to accomplish and those sorts of things and trying to, to, to not attack that directly, but just to, to just sort of ask those questions and, and it might not lead to something right away you know it might just kind of cogitate in the back of the mind for a little bit and they might come to you a little bit later but i think that's it's a a struggle that all coaches have is how much is too much how far is too far how fast is too fast but at the same time i think you can handle it so how do i have that conversation with you so that we know that we're coming from a, a good place right to this is for the benefit of student learning and it's for the benefit of student outcomes. It's not an attack on anybody. Um, that's a very, very fine line to try and walk. Yeah, when you were saying right. that, talking right. about that, and I was in thinking conversations that. too, because I have been at, doing a lot of listening, but also asking. Do you want to go ahead? Okay. Um, so prefacing, you know, I'm asking a lot of questions now, but and sometimes when I feel I need to, I will preface it with like, I, I'm really trying to get clarification. I really want to understand what's going on so that, cause it can be taken as I'm questioning why you're doing things or how you're doing things and to make sure, you know, even to be transparent about it, like I, you know, I'm asking even my colleagues, my new, my new colleagues, you know, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions cause I, I need help understanding what's going on. I'm not questioning you know, how things were done or how you're doing it. It's just more of, I need to understand what's happening. I was just saying, and and we're kind of beyond it now, but I'll just summarize it anyway. I think that idea of how do I push things without shoving, that's the fine balance that coaching is like literally every single day and finding the almost political ways of making sure that you aren't shoving in places where you shouldn't be or stepping on people's toes. I think that's the like really challenging part of the job understanding all of the different dynamics and personality elements and historical elements that go into the decision-making process at a school, that's not easy. And you don't figure that out in the first couple of weeks of school that takes some time. So that's another, maybe in those columns of things or those important things you do when you're new to a school, that's something that has to be a priority too, is figuring out all of that stuff so that you can push forward, but it's not that like, what is that thing called that moves the dirt? Bulldozer, but you're not. (laughs) So along those lines, I do want to ask you one more question before we wrap up for today. And it's kind of in line with how do I push things without shoving? And I'm very genuinely curious in your response. You were mentioning earlier that um, you're working with lots of new coaches. And I know that's part of the coach micro credential from Maduro Learning. And I am also working with new coaches because we're working on that together, which is amazing. And I feel like one of the questions that I keep hearing from them, and I totally get it, 
when I have a lot of answers, but I want to hear a lot of other people's answers, is how do you stay motivated as the coach when you want to push things, but you're conscious of not shoving and you know that you need to, you have these goals that you know the school wants and you know you're responsible for getting part, part of those pieces done. How do you stay motivated when you might be the only one in your division or in some cases the only one in your school who really wants those things to happen, who's that's their first number one priority? Oh, we all have such great intentions and great perspectives. And especially if we've experienced something, we really want others to have this positive experience. And I think it's where you have to step back, step back and kind of, and I, I, I'm having a conversation with somebody similar to this today, as far as like really finding out what are the, the big pictures things that, I might not have any control over. You know, what do I have some influence on? You know, I, I, you see those, uh, those graphics, like, you know, your spheres of influence and in that. So um, stepping back in, and then maybe trying to figure out where, where, some, where can I get some good, easy, quick wins? And that takes that reflection and stepping back. And we can walk into a situation. I've seen coaches do that. Like, they're very, like, they're gung-ho on getting a makerspace made because they just, but maybe that's not where the school is. You have to, in the students and the teachers, you have to look at the bigger picture. Uh, and we all have, they're all good intentions, but I think it takes some reevaluation. And, and then you have, that's where you find your motivation is, is I need to refocus. I need to, to reflect and really figure out what can I do and to get to the goals that others have. And uh, it's really about other people's goals and a lot of the school's goals, the teacher's goals, the student's goals. Um, of course, I, my goal should be built on what they need and what their, their goals are. So for me, it's, and I need that time. I need to have other coaches or somebody I can just like, ah, this is like, I'm so stuck right now. And I'm so, nobody wants to do this. It's then kind of, sometimes you just need to let, vent that out and then take a step back and really think about, um, you know, what's, what's, what can you do and it might be something starting with something small i know with some of the coaches i work with they're like they want to make this big school change and it's, it's like okay we need to piece that chunk that out how is that going to happen you have this really great idea how does it fit with the vision and the mission um who's you know whose support do you need to do this and um just i've you know worked with some coaches and they developed plans and they've taken it to their admin and uh some, you know, they may at least listen to them. So finding these ways to communicate, to re really take time to reflect, reevaluate, refocus, and move from and try again. It's, I think that's one thing for me is I really want to help people solve problems, you know, find the problems they want to solve and support that. Um, and I can't do it by myself. So who, you know, what, who do I need to help me do that? And then um, I've got some great, both I'm developing some relationships with people here, but also in my, uh, my PLN, my coaching network, it's, it's, I can always like, Hey, are you having this? And sometimes it's like, you know what, maybe you need to, you know, that just needs to go to the side for a while and focus on something else. So that's how, um, I guess just reflecting on, <laughs> on myself. That's how I approach it. I think that's I think so many good points. Sorry, Clint. I just want to say one thing. I think that sometimes for coaches, it feels like you're pushing against the tide. And so that idea of going back and looking at the bigger picture and remembering that while, yes, you are the advocate and you don't want to let go of that, there is a bigger picture that you're part of. And it's not just you. It's the whole school moving together. Go ahead, Clint. Sorry. No, it's right. And I was going to say, I think if your bigger picture is aligned, as you said earlier, with mission and vision, and you know, that if your administration is behind the mission and vision, and you can say, look, this is this is going to help us get there, um, you may be a little bit ahead of the curve in thinking about that. But I also think your administration or and your other teachers appreciate that somebody is out there doing that kind of heavy lifting ahead of them. So they're not the ones who are thinking about that for the first time. And um, I think a, a really important skill that everyone needs to practice and that you know, needs to, to recognize and, and, and say that is out there is there is this concept of managing up, right? And, and how are you working with your principals to uh, you know, get your ideas into their ears or you know, into their thoughts so that as they're talking to people that they have influence on and you know, they're thinking, oh yeah, 
they brought me this really great idea about how we're going to make a makerspace or why this is important or why we need to think about our curriculum changes or divide whatever it happens to be you know so you're you're managing up with those with your principals and you're also providing vision and leadership with your teachers and with the students and so you're kind of in this it, it really is in this caught in between stage right and um it, it it's a tricky balance but when you get it right it's pretty powerful All right, and on that note, we will wrap up this call for today. Thank you so much for sharing all of your experiences, Diana. I think it's so fascinating to hear from an experienced coach coming into a new school and just remembering what are all those priorities that you have to kind of keep at your fingertips as you're kind of going through your daily interactions, meeting so many new people and going to so many new places and remembering so many things. There's a lot going on. So thank you for providing that uh, guidance for any coach going into a new school. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. Yeah, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching our video today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you'll know when we release a new video each week. At Aduro Learning, as you know, we want to help you coach better. To get you started, we've got a free digital download for you called Five Strategies for Your Coaching Toolkit right in the description box below. And if you're looking for even more, we now offer private coaching sessions to help you work through any specific issue you might be having as a coach or even just as an educator. Do you have a problem you can't seem to solve? Get your introductory private coaching session for free with us. Learn more at adorolearning.com slash private coaching. Thanks for joining us today and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.